Our first presentation is Simon Philpot from the Tate. He's a senior conservation technician at the Tate, and his talk is dry mounting, wrapping, I'm so, butchering this, sorry, dry mounting, wrap mounting for photos. Hello, my name is Simon Philpot, and I am a senior conservation technician working in paper and photography conservation at Tate. Today, I am going to briefly talk to you about a technique that we have developed over the past five years for mounting oversized photographs at Tate. Over the last few years, Tate have continued to acquire large format photographs reflecting a trend in contemporary photography with artists moving away from wanting to present their works in traditional window mounts. When Tate acquires such works ready mounted and framed, these have usually been adhered to a rigid support, most commonly dye bond, an aluminium composite sheet using a process known as dry mounting. This allows the work to fill the entire space of the frame whilst remaining flat and not sagging over time. However, Tate are also acquiring many large format photographs unmounted and unframed. This can happen for a number of reasons, including a price being agreed between curatorial and the gallery or artist without factoring in mounting or framing costs an artist or a curator not being aware of the standard methods used in mounting and framing digital and analog photographs, an artist or gallery not being able to afford the crating or shipping costs, or an artist choosing a poor quality support material. We've therefore had to develop an alternative method for mounting at Tate, which gives similar results to dry mounting. This method has become known in Tate as wrap mounting, and we have already successfully used it on many photographs in the collection, such as works by Zanelli Maholi, Vanessa Winship, Mary Yates, and Larry Achim Pong. So why do we wrap mount? Once acquired, we are no longer to, able to dry mount artworks for the following reasons. We do not have dry mounting facilities at Tate. We do not send collection works for external mounting and framing due to risks of damage and high insurance costs. Though the outcome of dry mounting is very stable, the procedure is not viewed as conservation friendly. Heat and pressure are applied to the photograph there is a risk of particles becoming trapped between the photograph and support and being visible, and it is not re reversible. These are risks which are negligible before the work is acquired, when any problems can be resolved between the artist or the gallery. But once an artwork is acquired, it is a very different scenario. In addition to not being able to dry mount collection works, our traditional in-house mount mounting methods, such as window mounts and photo corners, are not appropriate for these works for both aesthetic reasons, but also because the photos will sag over time. A few years ago, we began developing our wrap mounting method alongside our photography conservator, Laurence Martin. This method was built from, from existing literature, namely an article entitled Reversible Mounting Techniques for the Display of Large Format Contemporary Photographs from the periodical Topics in Photographic Preservation from 2007. This article described a method developed for mounting photographs based on the edge lining method used on canvas paintings. Our method not only differs significantly from this, but also develops a method for wrap mounting photographs on fiber based papers, as well as on resin coated papers. 
Our wrap mounting uh, method consists of adhering Japanese paper hinges around all four edges of the photograph. We use RK17 Japanese tissue, which we are familiar with and has good strength. We cut the tissue into five centimeter square hinges with a single feathered edge. And the work is placed face down on a sheet of clean, non-woven polyester above a sheet of blotter and finally a piece of museum board. This allows us to move the work carefully when turning for hinging, whilst the surface of the photograph remains static against the polyester. And then we weight the work before we begin hinging. For resin coated papers, we use as an adhesive a 50-50 mix of Lascaux 498HV and 303HV, which when it becomes dry, becomes tacky, much like a post-it note. We place the hinge on a clear sheet of polyester and brush the Lascaux mix liberally on the rough side of the feathered edge, about one centimeter in. Before the Lascaux dries, we lift the hinge off the polyester and move to a clean area so that the feathered edge remains neat. We allow the hinges to dry in a dust-free area for 24 hours. When applying the hinges, we position them on the back of the photograph before gently applying pressure with a bone folder. There is no need to weight these. We continue around the perimeter of the work, overlapping the hinges in the corners. For fibre-based papers, we use a 10% solution of Clucel G in ethanol. We place the hinge on a scrap of mount board and brush the Clucel G liberally on the rough side of the feathered edge, again about one centimetre in. The hinge is immediately turned over and attached to the edge of the photo. We press this down before applying even pressure with a bow folder. We continue adhering hinges around the photograph, attaching three to four hinges at a time before weighting these with strips of non-woven polyester, blotter and perspex. These hinges take about 20 minutes to dry. Both adhesives contain no water, so will not swell or distort the paper, and they're easy to reverse. These are adhesives that we are familiar with. They are stable and have good aging properties. The adhesive bond may not be as strong as it would be with our solutions of wheat starch or methyl cellulose, but this is not a concern, as once framed, the edges of the photograph will rest against the spaces, which will keep the work in place. For the support, we use an archival honeycomb panel, which is rigid, has a smooth, even surface and is lightweight. Eight millimeter thick board is sufficient for most photographs, but on exceptionally large works, we use a 13 millimeter thick board. The honeycomb board is cut two millimetres bigger than the photograph, giving one millimetre excess board on all sides of the photograph. Edges of the board are sealed with P90 archival tape to prevent the honeycomb becoming a home for pests. We wrap and tape the hinges to the back of the honeycomb board using pieces of P90 the same width as the hinges. We begin in the centre, turn over and check that the photograph is central before continuing towards the corners, much like stretching a canvas. Once complete, we add a full strip of P90 across each length of hinges, and the work is now ready to be framed. Here is an example of a work which has been mounted or framed in-house. This work was prepared for the Zanelli Maholi exhibition at Tate Modern in 2019. As you can see, the final result has an identical appearance to a dry mounted work. As the spaces are in contact with the work, we ensure these are made from archival museum board. Here we have used a micro chamber board which matches the finish of the black frame. We've not only limited this technique to oversized works, but any works in the collection which requ require the dry mount aesthetic. As you can see from these works by Larry Achi and Pong, which are on display at Tate Britain.
Thank you all so much for listening, and I hope you have enjoyed this very brief talk. I think we have I think we have Simon in the virtual waiting room. Yes. Thank you for that talk, Simon. Thank you so much for Hello. that talk, Simon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry I butchered your title. Sorry, I was just say, saying thank you very much for inviting me. Do we have questions for Simon? How many, what, what's the largest number of hinges you've had to put on a photograph? Um, that's a good question. I, I don't know off the top of my head, but a hinge is about five centimetres long, so I guess that's two inches to, to you guys. Um, so for a large, a large uh, work on paper, say uh, a metre and a half by a metre, that's quite a lot of uh, hinges. I think it must be about two or three hundred hinges. Yeah, that's quite a few. <laughs> Hi, we have a virtual question. Um, hi, Simon. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Um, it's about the proportions of the LASCO 498 and uh, the, and the other one, <laughs> the 300, um, yeah. for the resin-coated papers. If you could elaborate on that a little bit more. Yeah, so it's, I think it's uh, 303 is the other one and 498. So we use a 50-50 mix and we we uh you could do you could mix that by volume but we find it easier to weigh that so we do equal weight of both adhesives and that gives the adhesive um just the right kind of uh tackiness really we're looking for something um that uh, holds enough um but is easily reversible excellent thank you um, we have a couple more questions from online. Um, how difficult uh, is it to remove the hinges after exhibition? Um, as a rule, we don't uh, remove the hinges. So these work, the works that we do this um, to are framed permanently. So we're mounting them um, to be stored um, framed permanently. Um, so the reversibility really is just um from a conservation perspective um but they are very on the resin coated paper they are very easily removed um because it's a pressure sensitive adhesive um on the uh, on um fiber based papers where we use the clue cell i haven't removed any it would be down to a, a one of our conservators to remove them but i i think they would um reactivate that with alcohol to remove them Excellent, thank you. And there was one more question that was about the, um, the in one of the pictures you had the, some of the weights that you used. There were some black tubular weights. <laughs> Can you tell us more about those? <laughs> yeah, we have, um, they're sort of a leather, um, a leather weight. So there were some disc weights and there were some tube weights and they are, I think they contain, um, uh, I guess they're sort of lead uh, shot inside a leather sewn pouch, is my understanding. We get them from a company um, called Preservation Equipment Limited uh, here in the UK. Excellent. And there's another question. <laughs> um, was there a particular order in which you secured the hinges? Um, when we're... Uh, Applying the hinges, not particularly. Um, I tend to start from a corner and work along one side um, and then just continue round overlapping the corners. When we actually then wrap the um, hinges around the honeycomb board, then we start from the middle of each side and then move outwards towards the corners because that gives a good sort of um, tension across across the photograph a bit like if you were stretching a canvas around a, a, a wooden strainer. I have a question about um, humidity. I mean, have you had any 
you know, papers, you know, distort in any way? If, it, if you had any, you know, humidity spikes in a gallery and seen the photos warp or any sort of distortions due to humidity changes? Um, I think we, ha yeah, I can remember some where they did, um, yeah, there, there was some uh, possible change during um, uh, display. Um, because I guess the difference is with the dry mounted work, it is adhered to a panel. So you're not going to get those kind of changes. But with this method, um, because the, the photograph isn't actually adhered to the board, um, there is room um, for the photographs to, you know, uh, slightly distort if uh, conditions are, are not, you know, perfect. Um, we have one more virtual one. Um, um, have you had to include pass-through hinges in the middle of the photo? Uh, no, we haven't. And that's the kind of thing that we, we would do if we were float mounting a work on, on museum boards. Often we'll do a, we call them like a slot hinge in the middle of the work because, for instance, perspex, the pull of the perspex can put on a very large work, can pull... Um, the middle of the work out um, but we found with this method um, with photographs wrapped around honeycomb is there's there's so much sort of tension in the work that we don't require any hinges in the middle of the work excellent the questions are keep they keep rolling in there's one more <laughs> um, <laughs> what's the advantage of using many small hinges instead of longer strips uh, that's a good question someone actually asked me that today because we were, I was demonstrating this to some of my colleagues. The, uh, it, I guess again, like if you were um, uh, uh, stretching canvas and you go from the middle outwards, if you have a large hinge, you don't get the same sort of tension. If you have many hinges and you migrate out towards the corners, you're kind of um, getting a better even tension on the photograph than if you had single large. Um, hinges around each side it would be a lot more difficult you'd have to wrap the hinge all around at once and you wouldn't be sort of um, creating that outward tension um, along the edge that makes sense thank you very much that's all the questions i have from virtual do we have any more thank you do we have any more questions from the house all right thank you simon thanks for joining thank you very much Cheers.